Today, there's only one chart that matters, and that's this particular chart comparing the extent of pullbacks, the percentage loss of those pullbacks, all put together here by the one and only Peter Brandt. Now, if you guys don't know who Peter Brandt is, he's a legendary trader that had his own trading company on Wall Street throughout the 80s and 90s, and he historically called the top of the 2017 bull run, saying that this particular rejection at the end of 2017 would mark an 80% correction from a pair parabolic rise. Not only did he call that right as it happened, which would have saved pretty much everyone in the industry some extreme agony, but it actually played out almost exactly like that. An 80% correction from 20,000 would have indicated a technical target of 4,000. Now, Bitcoin eventually worked its way down to about 3,300, and that was the ultimate low with essentially a huge capitulation candle. Now, that is some clairvoyance. Just to give Peter his kudos, his well-deserved chops here. He knows how to call it here in crypto land. He put together this chart here of Bitcoin and the magnitude and duration of bull market corrections. Now, what you'll see here on this chart is that they have the week of the high, the actual price of the high, the week of the low, the price of the low, and the percent magnitude of the correction and the week of the new high. So they're tracking right now from the peak of the last high to the peak of the new high. So peak, valley, new peak, duration. So what they're trying to see here is how long did the correction last effectively from the last peak to the new peak? And what he's saying here is that we have a really rich history of really bad corrections in bull markets. We talk about this all the time, that the bull market is a bucking bronco and it really wants to, you know, essentially kick you off of the ride. It doesn't want you to make it to the promised land. And what you're seeing right now is it's pretty hard to stay on the ride when things like this happen, especially when it feels as if there's been a sea change. I talk about this all the time. Whenever there are major news events, whether it is some kind of government ban, whether it is is something like Elon Musk tweeting that Tesla is no longer accepting Bitcoin and then Square coming out. It feels like all the companies are going to turn against Bitcoin. These are what I call sea change news events, but they're really actually being exploited by the whales to make you think that something catastrophic is happening, just like with the China bans of 2017 that weren't really bans, but were used as such, the India bans, especially when they are corroborated with a massive dump in the market. This is designed to trick you into thinking that crypto is essentially done, the bull market's over, that everything from here on out is just pain. And it's almost never the case that a news event triggers these things. It's just cyclical motions of the market. Now, with regards to the current dip we're in, as you can see, it fits really well within this historical context. We have a 38%, 41%, 38%, 37, 34, 41, 39, 30, 31, 26, 18, 32. And as you can see, I'm not quite sure. It looks like 416 is when we had our last peak here. We're currently uh, maybe a week, four weeks or so past that. So we're currently well within the normal range here for a correction, both in time scale as well as magnitude. So as much as this feels like it's a very catastrophic event with Elon Musk coming out against crypto, which he didn't really do, he backpedaled a lot of his statements yesterday saying, no, actually Tesla didn't sell their Bitcoin and actually this, actually that. Look, he's just tweeting. He's just a guy. He got emotional. People keep calling him out. And when anyone calls anyone out, they have a right to respond. Now, Elon did, of course, cause this catastrophic collapse, or at least that's the appearance is that he caused some collapse. I do believe that, as always, there are whales that are forcing a big dump and shorting at the same time, selling and shorting. This is a way that these big whales can make you think that something really big is happening and cause an even more cataclysmic selling snowball. Now, when I see something that really stands out and doesn't fit within the context of these bull market corrections, we can start saying, hey, is something different here? But the numbers do not lie that we are well within the realm of a normal bull cycle correction. So until we are proven otherwise, until we see again that we have some serious evidence that this is very different than other bull market corrections, when I see something above 50%, to be honest, I don't really count this 72% number because I don't consider 2019 to really be the bull 
bull run. I consider the bull run to have started really in 2020 or, you know, after that collapse of 2019. I think of that as sort of like a bear market retracement, but anything over 50%, and I'm starting to really think differently, but we haven't come anywhere close to that. We're at 32.5%, which is really right in the wheelhouse of where these bull market corrections start to reverse. And like I said yesterday, I was looking for the low 40s. Hey, if we go down to 35, I might be sweating bullets here, but I'm still not selling yet. And so that's kind of what I'm looking for is a 50% correction or more. We'll see if we get that. But for me right now, it looks like a normal bull market retracement. Let me know in the comment section below. Does this chart help demystify what's going on here in crypto land? Do you understand a little better how these things can work and play out? We also had Elon tweet again that Tesla has not sold any of its Bitcoin. Of course, if Tesla had sold any of its Bitcoin, it would have had to declare that. These are bigger pieces of news that would have had to be done more formally. He can't just say these things on a whim and a tweet. I think there are some restrictions on what he can do with these things, regardless of whether or not he did speak out of turn. They're saying that 42.8 might be the technical bottom here because this is where he tweeted. You could see this chart overlaid with Tom Brady's tweet, Elon's tweets, Elon's tweets, more tweets, and then and you have the tweet here saying that Tesla did not sell their Bitcoin. I don't know. This is just a supposition here, but it's interesting to see that maybe, just maybe, this 42.8 level might be the bottom. I don't know. We'll have to see about that. We also have Raul Pal, who's you know a very, very famous investor in the space, saying only buy or hold. Don't worry about shorting or selling here, and that the price we're looking at here hints at a falling wedge. Now, a falling wedge is a bullish pattern, and once it breaks to the upside, it can cause a lot more bullishness. So if that's the case, certainly hope it is is that we could actually see a tremendous amount more upside once it does break this area to the upside. Now, the last chart I want to bring up here is the Bitcoin dominance chart, and I will get rid of this. Obviously, I was screaming about Bitcoin dominance needing to come down throughout all these weeks earlier in the year, and hey, look, I was right about this, but it's important to realize that this particular drop that we're experiencing right now, this particular cascade of Bitcoin dominance down, well, maybe, just maybe, it's equivalent to this cascade up here. It sort of feels like this early collapse of Bitcoin dominance, which means that there is a lot more room to run here if this is anything like the previous cycles. Now, I did make the comment back when we were up here, I think we were up here at, what was this, a 70-something percent Bitcoin dominance. I said we were gonna come down to 10 to 25% Bitcoin dominance, and we are certainly right on the way here as we're looking like we're about to break the 40% Bitcoin dominance dominance level. And I wouldn't be surprised if we did that. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if we broke below 20, as I've said before. And I do believe during this time, just like last time, as Bitcoin dominance was absolutely crumbling, we had this epic growth of Bitcoin price. I mean, look at this parabola. It's absolutely incredible how much Bitcoin grew while the dominance was crumbling last time. And in my mind, the same thing is going to happen again. So remember, Bitcoin's going to grow and dominance is going to collapse, which means an altcoin season unlike anything we've seen before. And it is quite the case that it feels like the maximalism around Bitcoin is starting to slip and slide away. I'm not saying that Bitcoin is going to change its place in the world. I'm just saying that the mindset around Bitcoin being the one and only coin is certainly dropping away. The more you have people like Elon Musk, Mark Cuban, and others venturing out into DeFi, Ethereum, altcoins, and understanding the magic of these ecosystems and the true utility of them. I mean, quite frankly, I use the Ethereum blockchain about 100 times more each week than I use the Bitcoin blockchain. So usage-wise and how I actually interact with crypto-wise, Ethereum is way more valuable to my crypto life. Not saying that it's going to end up flipping BTC, but if it did, it wouldn't surprise me. And in general, Bitcoin's dominance receding and huge other altcoins absolutely booming and taking some of that market share wouldn't surprise me at all at this point in the market cycle. Now, if things turn bearish again, seeing those L1s and those other hot altcoins recede back in their market share and Bitcoin take over as the safe haven asset again, like we saw in 2018 and 2019, well, that wouldn't surprise me either. This is just how the cycles work. But right now, we're in full-blown altcoin bull mode. And if we're able to regain some steam here, regain a little bit of footing here on the Bitcoin chart, well, it wouldn't surprise me at all that we end up seeing yet another magnificent run here out of the alts. In fact, I'm expecting it. Even if Bitcoin's run is over, I'm expecting a massive run out of the alts. That's just how these bull markets
markets play out. So even though we're in the depths of one of the scariest pullbacks in crypto land, again, I didn't sell a ton of coins throughout this. I tend to only accumulate during these dips. I might sell some of my altcoins if they're doing really well. I might sell some of those for Ethereum because I think Ethereum right now has had a nice dip. I also am very interested in accumulating the high quality L1s and their most important projects. And I think it's really important to take a second and look back and say, hey, are there any real blue chips here? DeFi blue chips. Chips, L1 blue chips, the type of coins that have had magnificent runs over the past few months and say, hey, are there any coins here that have just gone back in time and I can get a cheaper entry into? There are lots of them on the board right now that are at major discounts from where they were just a few days ago. And I do believe as Bitcoin overcomes this current hiccup, as the crypto industry regains some of its bullish momentum later in the year, that this could be an amazing opportunity, an amazing opportunity to get into the coins that you value most. Again, I'm looking for a big DeFi summer. And the L1s, the Polkadots, Solanas, Binance Smart Chain, Cardano. Cardano ecosystem is explosive. Like I said, all these Cardano new projects are getting a ton of hype. And it's an easy way that you can get ahead here. It's like the new BSC. And BSC kept on cranking for months and months. So the Cardano ecosystem, or at least the future promised Cardano ecosystem, is definitely a place where there's going to be a fertile ground for gains. Now, again, this is just my strategy. You guys got to do your own research. This channel is not here to make decisions for you. I'm just here to share my knowledge and share my own approach to the markets. And it's meant to be a basis for you to make your own opinions. So in these moments, especially, it requires the ability to manage your emotions, learn to manage your risk, and also make the kinds of decisions that can get you ahead. But it's up to you to do those. If you're right, you're the genius. And if you're wrong, well, you're the goat. I certainly hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you got some value out of it, go ahead, give me a thumbs up. And remember, if you want more videos like this, as well as more coin picks for the coins that I think are going to dominate the next cycle, then make sure you subscribe and put that bell notification on. As always, my name is Elio Trades. You can find me on Twitter at Elio Trades. I'd appreciate you following me over there. And I make all kinds of different content on Twitter. So you're definitely going to want to make sure you don't miss a tweet. The link for that is in the description. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you very soon on the next episode.